Good morning. I was um, just listening to Brandon Holt sing, uh, it's a cover, your presence is heaven. And I just want to share just a minute of that with you before we got started. Um, just been a place of worship this morning. So I want to welcome you to our Mountain Movers prayer call. It's a new month and we're got to have a new focus and our focus for this month is facing your giants. And um, I'm Pastor Jewel Williams, one of the lead pastors of Abundant Life Church of God. And so we're talking about facing your giants. And today we're, we're dealing with fear. And I, I don't know about anybody else, but for me, you know, whenever the Lord gives me these topics for whether it's prayer, preaching or whatever it is, I always look at to say, OK, Lord, what are you getting ready to do in the hearts of your people that are receiving and are listening, that are willing to hear what it is that you're saying? Because you want us to know something. And so I'm not just telling you this for yourself, but for you. But this is also for me. And so let's just jump right into the focus for this for today. So I like I say we're talking about fear. Now, fear is that feeling that's promoted by this perceived danger or threat that we feel in our lives. And fear can even cause a change in our metabolism and our organs functioning and ultimately even in a change in our behavior, such as we're fleeing from things, we're hiding from things, or we freeze when we find ourselves in those, uh, faced with those things that we are afraid of. We freeze. Some of us are so afraid to speak that when we have opportunity to stand up and say something, we can't even open our mouths, our throats are are, are, are um, feel like they're choke like we're choking so we freeze when when that perceived trauma or event happens fear can occur in fear fear may occur in response to something that is either occurring in our present or in anticipation or expectation of some future threat uh, being perceived and so we perceive it as a risk and so then we even you know we've heard about the fear response so the fear response arises and and again it arises from that perceived danger um, leading to us either confronting and so some of us out of fear we attack you know so you're not going to get me i'm going to get you first so some of us attack or some of us again avoid the threat we 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 do that you know that's that fight or flight response and so in in extreme cases like i said we can we can freeze um, and even come paralyzed in and um, not be able to move. So what am I trying to convey? Well, our fear comes because of some expectations that we have that something will happen negative. Now, spiritually, we want to apply that spiritually. So spiritually speaking, if we have something, if we've had something bad happen to us in our past, the enemy of our soul, he constantly fans that fear. And he brings it to a place where he ignites us or ignites within us this belief that what has happened in the past will happen again. Or we perceive that if something happened bad, then again, something you know in our future will do just like in before. And so what has happened, what may have been a one event, something bad may have happened. Uh, but that now we've opened the door because we're allowing the enemy to fan that in our thoughts and our actions. And now it's become a spirit of fear and we're trusting and believing what the spirit of fear is telling us over what the truth of God is telling. Let me say that again. When we allow the enemy to fan a fear and, and everybody has fears of something. But that doesn't mean that it has to come to that, go to that place where it becomes a spirit of fear. It becomes we're we're consumed with this spirit of fear when we begin to trust over and over and over again what the enemy fans in us related to that fear over the truth of God. Let me read the scripture for you. Second Timothy, verse one and seven. Excuse me. Um, when when you see the scripture, what does it tell us? It says, "For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind." This scripture that I just read tells us where fear comes from. This this fear that grips you and you can't let go of and, and, and it doesn't let go of you. It's a spirit. And many of us read, I mean, I've read that scripture. Now, many of you probably are just as guilty. We've read that and just cut out spirit part and just said, God isn't giving me fear, but power, love, and sound man. You know, God isn't giving me fear. So we just look at that, but we don't understand it's a spirit of fear. 
And therefore, spirits that are not of God need to be cast out and dealt with according to the way God says. And so, you know, this spirit does not come from God. This fear that grips us and keeps us uh, under his control doesn't come from God. This fear comes from the enemy of our soul and he tries to speak to us and make us come from a confused place. Because remember, God says he's given us a sound mind, but fear confuses us. Fear um, confuses the truth. Fear uh, um, mars the truth and what what's a sound thinking. And so instead of us coming from this place of confused you know, a confused place, a marred place. God wants us to come from that sound mind that he gives us. That's what he gives us in love. Because he gives us the spirit of love, then he gives us the ability to have a sound mind. He wants to make you be, um, the enemy wants you to make choices based on what things you perceive. Uh, it sometimes happened, you know, if something bad happened before, as I said, he wants to keep reminding you and keep reminding you and reminding you and reminding you so that you will believe that it will happen again and again and again, that every time you do something, you're going to get the same response. He wants to set you up to free from the things that God wants you to overcome. This spirit of fear makes some of us freeze. We freeze emotionally. We freeze in, in being able to deal with confrontation uh, when, I, when I, we're unable to move forward or to trust God that what he says is true. This fear response rises in us and we see danger instead of the one that overcomes the world and all that is dangerous. We see the threats. We anticipate it, even expect things to go wrong, and we trust in what we perceive instead of what we know. And so, for example, if somebody's hurt you before, you can look at a marriage. If 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 your husband has hurt you, or you know, boyfriend has hurt you, if somebody's hurt you, your 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 current relationship sometimes suffers because of those past fears. Because now you perceive that that's happened in the past. You know, if he's mistreated you, you did something, then you automatically assume that this person that you're with now is going to do the same. And that fear can grip many of us and keep us from being able to trust or to give our heart or to love the way God wants to. And these things the enemy does, he wants to keep us frozen and unable to move forward and, and to trust. So we, what we're actually doing, we're trusting the lies of the spirit of fear over the truth of God's word and his spirit. That's some good stuff. First John 4, 18 says, there is no fear in love. Let me say that again. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear because fear has torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. The first thing then that we need to do to be able to move forward so that we're no longer trusting the spirit of, of fear, the lies that it tells us, but to trust God's word and his spirit is we have to receive the love of God. Amen. And there's only one true cure for overcoming fear. It is when we receive the gift of God's love fully in our hearts. For it is God's love that casts out, gets rid of that fear. It won't be in me just trying to reprogram my thinking, even though we do need to be transformed in our minds in order to walk in this freedom once God deliver us. But the truth is, we really can't just say, you know, I'm going to think right thoughts and, you know, do those things. If we really have not received and allowed the love of the Father to penetrate our hearts, because the enemy is stronger than just us making up our mind. He is able, and see, we can get deceived in thinking that, oh, if I just make up my mind, then everything will happen because I make up my mind. No, it's more than that. You need the power of God's love penetrating your heart so that you can do that. And for some of us, we need to first repent and say, God, forgive me for doubting your love, for trusting in my fear, for trusting in what I perceive or what I expected. Because what I've said then is these things that have happened to me or these things from my past or whatever it is, is greater than you. You're not able to help me or to keep me, even if I do find myself in danger. And, you know, I'm just going to be real transparent. I've found that I've had to do that recently. I have to say, Lord, forgive me. 
I am doubting you. I'm still allowing some fears in my heart to dictate how I'm responding in, in certain areas of my life. And I had to say, I don't want that anymore. I don't want to be hindered because of past fears in my life. And so I had to say, Lord, forgive me, remove that. And I want to allow your perfect love, that flawless, endless, and overwhelming love to fill every part of me, fill me so much that there isn't any more room for anything that's not like you. And so today I receive, you have to say today, I receive your ending, unending love in my life. And with it, I receive your deliverance because you say that your perfect love cast out all fears. So I won't be afraid anymore. Not just because I just, you know, I'm declaring it in the sense, but I believe by faith that because I'm receiving your love, I'm opening myself to receive your love. Your love is going to cast out that fear. Because fear comes from the devil and it comes to torment me. It comes to cause sickness from anxiety in my mind, my mind and my body to stress me out. Some of us have migraine headaches and back, back aches and so much more because we've allowed fear to come in and take over our body. And it comes in and it's a spirit, but it come in and it brings with it conditions. Fear brings physical conditions that we don't even aware of. Um, and so today I'm, you know, you say, Lord, remove all the fear that is set up in my life and move, remove it because of the perfect love that cast out all fear. Amen. You know, um, I just thank God for that. This next um, scripture I want to read is Proverbs 29, 25. It says the fear of man brings a snare, but he who trusts in God will be exalted. You know, one of the other things when we receive the love of God is we also have to release expectations of acceptance. Some of us are unable to let go of fear because we're afraid of disappointing others. So we have to re release that expectations of acceptance from others. You know, you've had people just say, I've been delivered from people. And it sounds funny, but really, you do have to have the Lord deliver you from that expectation that people will validate you, that people will um, do what's right. And many of us are unable to move forward because of we have this fear of rejection, of being rejected from those that we love. And, and what ends up happening is instead of being God pleasers, we find ourselves becoming people pleasers. And we don't want to disappoint our parents, our spouses, our pastors, friends, and, and so many others. And when we, we do that, that, that we have that need to be liked, to love, and to belong, it takes over. And we allow that to set up, set up as fear in our lives. And when we do that, it becomes a snare. And then the enemy of our soul uses it to trap us. He traps us because we struggle with doing what pleases God when it may call for us to be disliked or rejected by others. So this is how he tricks us. This is how he snares us because we might have a desire to please God, but we often then are in this battle because we don't want to be rejected. We don't want to be alone. We don't want to, we don't, we fear that if we do what God tells us to do, we'll find that, that others won't agree. But today God is reminding us, hallelujah, the way to overcome the fear of what people think and that acceptance is to release that need into his hand. So we have to say, God, is I trust you in, in you. And when I trust you, you told me you will exalt me. You will lift me up. And we have to be willing to let go of, of those expectations of others' approval. I know this is difficult because we were created to be relational. We were created to be relational and we do need those validation. However, we can't let any relationship keep us from moving forward and being who God has called us to be. We have to trust. God gives us the ability to trust. And, you know, we have to just say, God, you know, give us the ability to trust you. Help us to let go of relationships that we need to. Today, we bring every relationship we have, whether it's our spouses, children, you know, co-workers, friends, family, we bring all those relations to you today and we place them on the altar. We seek your approval, God, and yours only. Not one person, but you and you alone. So today, Lord, we, we want to pray for the ability to release those expectations. Even, even that needs in our heart, even the need that we may have in our heart to be approved, Lord, we want to give it to you. We want you to help us to find peace because some of us, that's what's going on. We don't have peace in us because we're struggling with this. Will they approve of me? Will they accept what I want to do? Many of us get stuck. We can't step out in careers and, and things in our life because we're stuck that maybe somebody won't approve of what 
we're doing. We just have to really get to the point where it's like, really, I don't care that you don't approve of God's destiny for me. I don't care if you even understand God's destiny for me. If I am clear, if God make it clear for me what I is, what you're calling me to do, and then I'm going to trust you. And so we have to ask God, remove doubt from my heart. Remove fear today so that my trust is in you, God, and you alone. And then let us come running to you, God. And, and you let us find God as the hiding place. When others reject us and talk about us or try to destroy who we are, let us not allow the fear of man to keep us from being who God has called us to be and that we run to him and seek what we need. Hallelujah. When things are going against us. In scripture, Matthew, uh, the next scripture and the last scripture is Matthew 10, 31. It says, fear you not. Therefore, you are more valuable than many sparrows. You know, the next way for us to be set free is we have to trust that God will provide. And one of the greatest fears is that somehow God will not take care of us. Um, you know, I ha honestly have to say that was one of my fears. Based on my past things, it appeared that that God just wasn't going to step in and fix some stuff. And what happens is then the enemy is able to set you up. He began, if you know, I began to allow the thoughts to come. That, you know, because of what happened in my past, I, I allowed those, those thoughts to become. And, and then my expectation, my I began to perceive that what had happened bad in the past was going to happen again. And that in some kind of way, God wasn't going to take care of me. Um, and in fact, that's, that is how I felt as though God was not going to take care of me. It felt like God was going to let everybody and anybody talk about me, destroy my reputation, my very identity. And I remember I kept saying, uh, God, hello, what's going on here? Are, are you going to do something? But can I tell you something? God was teaching me. First, he was revealing through my difficulties the things that was hidden in my heart. Sometimes God will let us go back to those same places of fear, not because he's an unloving God, not because he's not a good father, but in fact, it's because he's a good father that he takes you back to those places because he needs to reveal them to you so that he can heal you. He can set you free from those areas. And so he wants to reveal what the fears are. What is it that you are allowing to be hidden in your heart that is keeping you hindered? and unable to move forward and so um you know the you know and so the fear that he was trying to show me was that i was perceiving based on past experience that he wasn't going to provide what i needed now the situation didn't change but what happened is i began to learn that even if i do face things and they look exactly like they did in the past that I was going to trust God through the process. So, you know, some my name was, you know, I was still talked about, name run through the mud, all of the stuff. Some people may still think I'm wor worthless. But you know what? Because I'm not concerned with what people think, I'm concerned about what God thinks. And so my heart is settled because I know that God has called me to do what he's called me to do. And I'm trusting him to provide what I need. So guess what? Some of those relationships that we have that, that reject us and, 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 and we feel alone. Well, can I just encourage somebody today? If people reject you, God, if you're following God, God will send you godly relationships and people that will invest in you, that will trust the destiny God has for you. And they will come and plant in you or water what God has put in you. And they will come and help. And can I also tell you, even if somebody breaks your heart, that you can trust God, that he can handle all of your brokenness, all of your hurt, all of your rejection, all of your abandon, abandonment issues. And he is saying, he could tell you just like he told me, I am right here. Don't be afraid because you are more valuable to me than even the sparrows. Just as I provided for them, don't you think I will provide for you? You know, we have to learn to trust that God for his provision. And then, let me just add this in here before we go to prayer. See, we see provision the way we want to see provision. When we think of somebody providing for us, we think, okay, you make everything easy and smooth and just bam, no issue whatsoever. But that's not truly provision. God provides for you even in the midst of difficulties. So sometimes the difficulties don't go away. But when you trust God, he provides for you in the midst of, he provides for it through, and if you get to the other 
other side of some situations in your life and you found there's some hurt and some brokenness, God is still a delivering God. Hallelujah. And he is still a God that will heal you. He's still a God that will deliver you. He's still a God that will bind up the broken, your broken heart. And so today I just want to encourage somebody, you know, let go of the fear. Give it to God. Let his love come and 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 dwell within your heart in such a way uh that like never before and when you allow him access to who you are and 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 you begin to really know who you belong to then you will begin to walk in the freedom from this fear you don't have to worry about being hurt many of us don't do what god tells us to do because it's this fear of being hurt it's this fear that if i do what you say god then I'll be hurt. You might be hurt. I'm not here to tell you you won't be hurt. I'm not here to tell you you won't be disappointed. I'm not here to tell you that things won't frustrate you. But I am here to tell you that God will never leave you alone and that he will walk through with you as you go through. Let's pray. God, we thank you today, Lord, that you are a God that cares about us. Lord, I thank you today that we're not alone, that we don't have to walk in this place and by ourselves. And so, God, first, I ask you to reveal our hearts to us. Lord, help us to see what fear lurks in our hearts. Help us to see it, Father, so that we can confront it, that we can confront it, not in just our power, but in your power. Because today, Lord, you have promised that you have given us you didn't give us the spirit of fear so we can know that it is not from you but lord you've also told us that there is no fear in love and so your perfect love cast out fear so today father i pray your perfect love that it would be revealed in the hearts of your people to everyone that's listening lord i pray that your love would be revealed to them lord i pray that you would um, mend up those hurts and those that that abandonment in their heart, that rejection in their heart, that loneliness in that heart, in their heart that have been caused by fear. Lord, we today just want to say you are a good, good father. You love us. You protect us. You comfort us. You heal us. You deliver us. You do not leave us alone. You do not forsake us when man may forsake us, when mothers and fathers more, more forsake us. God, you never forsake us. You are with us always. You have promised that you would never leave us nor forsake us. And so today, Lord, God, we thank you. And so, Lord, because of that perfect love that we received today, we just say, Lord, and we, we say, Lord, forgive us. We repent right now in the name of Jesus. We repent of, of trusting our fear over trusting you, your word, and your spirit. So, Father, today we ask you to forgive us for allowing that spirit of fear to take resident in our heart, Lord. And so we, we come right now and we sever our connection to that spirit of fear. We come right now in the name of Jesus and we cast out all fears. We cast out all fears, Lord God. We renounce our connection to the fears that have been in our lives. So Lord God, we ask you to deliver us from fear. Lord, there's some that have fear that and it's 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 planted in rejection because they've been rejected and so they have fear lord so we come and we speak to that rejection and we cast you out right now in the name of jesus there are those that have fears and they're feared of being alone that no one would would be friends with them and so they go to extremes to, to find friendships so we speak to that loneliness right now and we apply the love of jesus to those areas in your life and so i just declare receive god's love for that loneliness for that fear and be it cast out in the name of jesus some of us even have a fear of succeeding because we've been told so many times over and over again that we won't be nothing we ain't nothing and never will be nothing and so even when we see success come coming in our lives, we begin to be fearful. So we just speak to that fear and in the name of Jesus and call you out, cast you out in Jesus name. Some of us have a fear of failure because we've seen it over and over again. Everything we've tried, we failed it. And so we have this fear that we don't even want to try anymore. We don't want to try at relationships. We want to try at friendship. We don't want to try on jobs and to try to be successful because we failed over and over again. But God, we talk to you and we come to you and we ask that you touch some heart that is dealing with that 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 fear and that has them fearing a failure and we just declare in the name of jesus to be free in jesus name there's some that are fear being harmed or hurt um 
some of it may come from physical abuse that they've suffered at the hands of somebody else but god we come right now when we speak your love and your healing to those areas of brokenness lord it's some that just have phobias and and fears that have come from places even that are not even um, real fears or real dangers but because of phobias and things in their mind because they've allowed the enemy to fan those fear they become folks some people can't even go to the dentist some people are afraid of heights and spiders or bugs that's fears that have got have them paralyzed lord god we speak to those phobias right now in the name of jesus and we cast you out and say be free of fear in jesus name some people have a fear of death so much so that they just are scared to do anything but lord so we speak to those fears and we cast them out in the name of Jesus. Some have fear of speaking out and of crowds and, and of being able to, to talk and to, to do the things. And Lord, some of these things that they may seem irrelevant, but God, when we allow them in our lives, they could even hinder us from being who you've called us to be. Somebody may be scared of speaking, and that might be somebody you've called to go and to speak to nations, but they can't do it because of the fear in their heart. So Father, we cast that out in the name of Jesus. Lord, their fears of and so many things some people have fear of intimacy and some of it can be because of fat past abuses and physical problems in their body but god today hallelujah we speak freedom in the name of jesus and if there's something in their physical body that needs to be healed we speak healing in jesus name be healed of your emotional issue be healed be delivered be set free in the name of jesus some of us have fears of abandonment from families and loved ones but god i ask today that you would touch those airs and let them know that even if man rejects you and pushes you aside that you God never leave us nor do you forsake us God there's some that even just have a fear of God they don't want to have a relationship with God why because of what they've seen in their parents they've seen abusive parents or they've seen commanding and demanding parents and they're applying who their natural father is to who God is so father we ask for healing in those areas so that people will not see you as this God that is just so demanding that does not give and does not have what got your love I ask you to allow somebody to receive your love right now in the name of Jesus. And when they receive that love, they'll realize that you are a good, good father. You are a good father. You are a loving father. Yes, you are a father of righteousness, but Lord, you are also a loving father. And in your righteousness, God, you give us the opportunity to be able to walk with you. God, there's those that are fearful of being in relationship with op the opposite sex. And so we see some men or women that have uh, suffered you know, sexual abuse at the hands of someone else. And because of that, they're afraid to be intimate with, with the someone in the opposite sex. So they are drawn to the same sex relationship. Father, I'm praying for healing in, in the hearts of those that have fears that have set up because of abuse, because of rape, because of trauma. And Father, I ask you to heal that trauma in their life right now in the name of Jesus. And when you heal that trauma, God, heal their minds, transport their minds, Lord, so that they can step in and be who you've called them to be that they can have a, a, a sound mind and have sound thinking and no, no longer let the enemy control the the thinking and the actions that are going on in their lives Lord, I just ask today that every type of fear that arises in the lives of your people, that we declare freedom over it right now in the name of Jesus. We declare release for all of those that have come today to receive from you. Heal those broken areas. Release your peace, your perfect love, and cast out the spirit of fear. Holy Spirit, come flood the hearts of your people and allow your glory to heal and deliver. And I just speak, be delivered today. Be set free in the name of Jesus. Lord, now we declare today that we will no longer allow fear to determine who we are we will no longer allow fear to hinder us and keep us bound we declare we will no longer trust the spirit of fear today we will trust in god and in you god and in your unfailing love today we declare that we are free because of the pure love of god that cast out all fear we declare today that every hindrance of fear and our lives will be revealed so that we can walk in freedom. We declare today that, that we repent for trusting in the spirit of fear instead of trusting in, in God's word and in the truth of his spirit. Lord, and today we are thankful. We thank you today for we are free because whom Jesus said free is free indeed. Today, Lord, we thank you and we receive your great love so that, so that we no longer have doubt 
or fear. Today, Lord, we thank you for delivering, for setting us free. And Lord, today, I know today is the, the day of prayer and but Father, what I pray on this day of prayer, Lord, is that you would bring us to be people of holiness, that you would rise up holiness in us, that we would seek to be holy people. Father, and if, you, if there's any unclean thing in us, we ask you to reveal it to us and we ask you to heal it. Father, we can pray for all the conditions in the world. But Father, today, I believe if we come individually before you and begin to ask you to change our lives, change our mind, change who we are, then one by one, we can begin to stand up and do the things that you've called us to do. And when we stand up and do the things you've called us to do, then as the people of God and the holiness of God and the power of God that will come through our lives, we will begin to see a change in this world because we are no longer uh, who we used to be, but we are now people that are uh, called by your name, walking in your purpose and doing the things that you have called us to do. So Lord, I'm calling for us to come back to be a people of holiness. It's more than the clothes we wear. I'm talking about the condition of our hearts bring us to a place where we seek holiness we crave holiness we desire holiness we want to be holy because you are holy and lord i in this prayer just asking for the special request lord there's a few people going on job interviews father i pray for their success in their job interviews lord open up the doors and give them the desires of their heart lord help them to find favor let them not be afraid or nervous when they speak in these job interviews but lord let them go in and know that just that today as we've talked about they don't have to have fear because you are the God that is with them and you never leave them, never forsake them. So you, they don't have to be afraid afraid of the negative they could just trust you and whatever the outcome is they trusted you were in the process and lord god there's some that are also in the place of healing i ask you to heal all infirmities that heal all cancers heal all diseases so god we ask for your healing right now in the name of jesus now father we thank you we honor you we glorify you and we give you all praises in jesus name we pray amen and amen Go and be in peace, no fear, no doubt, because of whose you belong to, who you belong to. You are God. And so for those that want to join us next next Thursday, May 12th, our, our focus is we're facing the giant, and the giant that we're facing is hopelessness. And if you would, uh, for those that are listening to this that are um, later and on YouTube, if you want to call in at the time of the call, it's at 5 a.m. Central Standard Time, and the call-in number is 712-832-8330. That number is 712-832-8330, and the access code is 489-5856. That access code, again, is 489-5856. And for those that will be listening to this later, I want you to listen to a song by Brandon Holt called Good, Good Father. And until we talk again, God bless.
Who you are?